Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Your word is the truth. We receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We will be hearers and doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. Praise the Lord. We are continuing to share with you on the subject of spiritual understanding. We talked about it many things this morning. We talked about the fact that there's a difference between knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Revelation knowledge comes through the Word of God, and that is pleasant to your soul as the Word comes into your mind. As He brings revelation, then you are to do that Word. As you do that Word, then that's going to produce spiritual understanding that's going to be imparted unto you. And then as you continue in the doing the Word of God, the knowledge and the understanding, that'll produce wisdom, with spiritual wisdom. And both of these, understanding and wisdom, are of the heart while knowledge is of the soul. And as this is, comes forth in your life, the understanding and wisdom being imparted unto you, then as you walk in it continually, you will see God bring tremendous results and victory in your life. We talked about the importance of having this understanding from many of the New Testament scriptures that we looked at, and we pointed out also the important things that we need to understand, many things that the Word declared, and we talked about principles for, that are necessary to gain spiritual understanding. We went through a lot of things that we covered. And tonight we're going to talk about those who have a lack of understanding and the effects of it. And for those who do have the understanding, the blessings that will come forth from it. We do begin, first of all, in Isaiah 11, verse 2. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, speaking of Jesus, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Understanding, it's a spiritual thing that God wants established in you. And remember, it is of the heart. If you don't have it, then we will not see God accomplish what he purposes. We see in Matthew 13, as we begin talking about the effects of the lack of it, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 13, <clears throat> verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. This is the parable of the sower. And this is talking about the word sown, then the ground is a type of the heart. So the word is sown in your heart. When it's sown in your heart, then, now, the devil, of course, will try to work against it. As you hear it, you are also to have the understanding of it. That means because you're going to meet the conditions of doing what is necessary to have that spiritual understanding. And if you do so, then you will walk in the ways of the Word and bring forth fruit. But if you don't maintain or have the understanding to begin with or maintain it, then the enemy will come and take away that which is sown in your heart. We did point out this morning that the fact the word sown here is interesting in the fact that it happens to be a perfect tense passive participle. Being a perfect tense, this means that it's referring to action occurring in the past with ongoing effects shown forth at the time of speaking. Meaning that this is speaking of one who had the word sown in their heart in the past, and if it continued to remain in you because you were walking in the Word of God, walking in the spiritual understanding, then of course it would you'd continue to see the good things come forth from it. But this also implies that a word that was sown in the past and continued for a while, if the devil can come and take that out, the word will be gone from your heart. This means the fact that you could have the, the word in your heart for a period of time. In fact, you could have spiritual understanding and then you could come to the place of not having the spiritual understanding anymore and not having the word in your heart because of giving place to him and not doing what's necessary to keep the word in the midst of your heart, which is important, of course, and then he can take it out. So you could lose what you've gained in the past, and this is the effects of lack of understanding. Certainly we will not have the word in our heart, and if the word's not in our heart, we will not see fruit in our life. We see another point over in Job. Job chapter 17, verse 4. 
For thou hast hid their heart from understanding, therefore shalt thou not exalt them. Their heart would have been hid from the understanding because they wouldn't have met the conditions that were necessary. And we talked about many things throughout the word that are necessary. So if you don't have the understanding, what's going to happen? He's not going to exalt them. What else does that imply? If you have the spiritual understanding, then God would exalt you. That's exactly what happened with Paul. Remember, Paul was being exalted by the Lord and because he had the spiritual understanding in the mystery of Christ. And the devil, of course, came to try to take, stop him and to buffet him continually. God was in the process of exalting him. If you have the spiritual understanding or walking in it, then God will be working to exalt you in that particular area of your life. If you don't, you will not be exalted. We see in Job 42, verse 3, Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. He spoke things that he didn't understand. He didn't get the spiritual understanding. He spoke a bunch of wrong things. And when it says things too wonderful, it really means something that is difficult to understand. This can mean it's certainly not talking about wonderful things because he was speaking wrong things, which I knew not. So he didn't understand these things. And because of that fact, what happened? He saw all kind of destruction. The devil came in and just wiped out so many different things. But if you get to the place of coming to, the, to repentance, which is what he did, he came to repentance and it showed for the fact that he, he knew he'd made a mistake. He had spoken wrong. He had thing, uttered things that he should not have spoken. And when he repented and he forgave his, son, his uh, friends, what happened? God then caused him to get blessed twice as much back. Twice as much came back to him because he came in line with the Word of God and got the spiritual understanding. Otherwise, if you don't get the spiritual understanding, then the devil is going to be able to come in and he's going to do a work against you. We need to get the spiritual understanding. Walk in it and see God bring forth his blessings and overturn the works of the enemy in our life. We see also in Psalms 82. Psalms 82 Verse 5, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. That shows you the effect of lack of understanding. If you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the understanding, you'll be walking in darkness. You won't be walking in the light. You won't see God's blessings come forth in your life. The way you're going to walk in light is because you get the knowledge of God and you do the word. Your spiritual understanding will be imparted unto you. He that doeth truth Come to the light, you'll come to that light, and instead you'll be walking in the way of light and you'll see blessings come. But if not, if we don't have the knowledge and if we don't have the understanding, it says that we will walk on in darkness. God wants us to get that knowledge and understanding which he will bring forth through his word if we do what he says. Another thing that would hinder us, a lack of having God's understanding will hinder us from seeing ourselves be directed in the paths that God has for us. Proverbs 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. You can't walk in your own understanding, your own ways. You've got to have his understanding and walk in his ways. If you will acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your paths. But what happens if not? If you are walking according to your own understanding, then you're not going to be acknowledged in all your ways. You're going to be thinking that you have it all figured out. Because God's the one who's going to direct your paths. Remember, it's not in man, for the steps, the steps of the Lord are going to be ordered by him, and he is going to direct them. So we need to have a, a, a spiritual understanding and lean not to our own understanding, but understand God's, what God says he wants you to do. Walk in it, trust in him, do what he says, acknowledge him in all your ways, and then we're going to see the promise come to pass. He will direct your paths. We see another thing in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. Whoso committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He doesn't understand the effects of what that's going to bring to him. He that doeth destroyeth his own soul. Adultery destroys the soul, not just causing physical problems that you will have, 
It can open up the door for all kinds of physical things. When you sin against the body, you, you, you commit fornication or any kind of sexual sin, you're sinning against your body, you can have physical diseases of all types come in. But notice it says it destroys his own soul. And then it says, a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Does a lot of damage. This is why we can never be even considering commit adultery. If you ever did in the past, you confess the sin, you repent, you turn from it. Don't ever consider committing adultery with a woman again, because if you do so, you'll be destroying your own soul. And again, as it says, the wound and dishonor, it's not going to be wiped away. The reproach will not be wiped away. We need to walk in God's ways, know how to keep our vessel in order and keep control of it so we don't yield to anything that is evil. We see another scripture along this line in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7. Behold, beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man. He was void of understanding. If he had the understanding, he would have never followed this path. He's void of understanding. Passed through the street near her corner, went the way to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black, and the night, dark night, here he meets a woman with a tire of a harlot and subtle of heart. <coughs> and of course, he goes down this path of destruction. That's why we can't be void of understanding, because you have to realize what's going to happen. It's not just going to be some event that's going to happen once. It's going to destroy you. What's going to happen, the ramifications of it, you cannot be void of understanding of the repercussions that will come. Remember, you destroy your soul, and you'll have a tremendous reproach and dishonor, and it will not be taken away. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. A fool has no delight in understanding but that his heart may discover itself. So someone that's being foolish is someone who's opposite of being wise, so he's obviously not walking in line with the word. He doesn't want to get understanding, because what will happen? If he does, God, of course, will be shining the light on all the areas of sin in his life and calling him to repentance, convicting him, because what will happen? Understanding, remember, comes into the heart, and then your heart will condemn you and convict you and show you, hey, you got some things wrong. And what will happen is heart may discover itself, uncover itself, and bring revelation of what goes on. Many people do not want to see what's really in their heart, and so they don't want to get an understanding. They want to just walk in their own ways and cover over all these things and not let, let anything be shown to them. The devil, of course, is trying to keep them in bondage. So we should want understanding. We, you know, if you don't, you're looking for understanding, spiritual understanding in your life, there's something wrong. Because God, if there's something wrong in your heart, He will shine the light on it. He will convict you, and your heart will discover what's really on the inside of it. People, many people think that their heart's fine just because they're born again or whatever. Not so. You can have all kinds of evil in your heart that you've let in from your members yielding to the enemy. We see in Proverbs 21, verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's quite a statement. If he wanders, he goes astray, he errs, goes off in ways of sin, out of the way of understanding. Otherwise, he's not continually walking in it. What happens? He's going to remain, it says, in the congregation of the dead. He won't have the life at all operating in him. Instead, He'll have seen destruction come his way. That's why we cannot be allowing ourselves to go in error or deviate out of the way of the word, the way of understanding. The way of the word would be the way to understanding, because remember we talked about the guy who's hearing the word because he's been taught the word, and doing the word is the one that comes to understanding. That means we must continue to walk in the ways of the word. That's critical for you to have understanding. And if you go apart from it, of course, you'll lose that, and you'll end up in the congregation of the dead, as he says. Proverbs 24, we see another effect of the lack of understanding. Here's the person who's slothful and lazy. Hey, you're going to pay a price for it. Look what it says in Proverbs 24, 30. I went by the field of the slothful. You can't be slothful, you can't be lazy, one of these ones that 
just doesn't want to do the things God says? By the vineyard of the man, void of understanding. What does that tell you? Slothfulness is tied in with showing you that this person doesn't have understanding. If they realized what the effect of slothfulness and laziness was in their life, they'd be doing what the Word says so they get the spiritual understanding. People that are lazy and slothful, they don't get the spiritual understanding because they won't be doers of the Word. They, do, they, do, they, they don't want to engage in, in carrying out what God says. What happens to this guy? Though it was all grown over with thorns, nettles had covered the face thereof, the stone wall thereof was broken down. Thorns, broken down, destruction, things have all fallen apart. That's everything decreasing, diminishing. You know, you know your fruit goes, withers away. I saw and considered it well, and I looked upon it and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. People that are slothful are people that are sluggard, they're lazy, they're even ones that like sleep. You're not supposed to love sleep. You get adequate sleep, but not to love sleep. So, if you're one who's like that, ah, you're in trouble. God wants us not to be like that. He goes on and says, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. It's like it'll just come on you. You'll have poverty, you'll have want, you'll have lack. It'll show up all of a sudden. And you're not going to be able to get away from it. Why? Because of being lazy and slothful and not diligent. God wants us to be diligent to do the things that he says. If we diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord our God and observe and keep all his commandments, then all these blessings will come on us and overtake us. If we're not, if we're lazy, if we're slothful, if we're not doing the things he says, you wonder why poverty and want and all these problems suddenly come. These are curses, aren't they? It's because this guy has been lazy. And what's the problem? He never got the understanding. He was a void of understanding because he wasn't obviously a doer of the word. That's how, one of the aspects of how you get to the place of having spiritual understanding. We also see in Isaiah chapter 27. So we can't be lazy, can't be slothful. Isaiah 27 verse 11. When the boughs thereof are withered, they shall be broken off. The women come and set them on fire, for it's a people of no understanding. Why did they wither? Why did they get broken off, broken down? Everything got destroyed. Because they had no understanding. If you have understanding, remember, that's because you're a hearer and a doer of the word. You're walking in it. You have that imparted into your heart, the revelation knowledge you've got. You've worked in your life and you've seen the fruit. And you see God accomplishing what he purposes. But if you have no understanding, you're not doing things. In fact, in this case, apparently there was some harvesting or fruit, referring to the boughs. They got withered. Otherwise, things that maybe you set in motion at one time, now they're all withered away. We cannot allow that. See, things just don't stay in the state they're in just because you got them to that place at one time. It's only because you continue in the Word and continue doing it. So these people had no understanding. And notice, he says, Therefore, he that made them will not have mercy on them. Mercy is not available to a person who doesn't have the understanding, which means they're not hearing and doing the Word. It's available to those who have met the conditions. Remember, we've talked about this before in Hebrews 4.16, where come boldly to the throne of grace that you might take hold. It is a subjunctive mood verb. You might take hold if you meet the conditions. You can't take hold of mercy and find grace to help in your time of need unless you've met the conditions. Notice else, he says, He that formed them will show them no favor, no mercy. That's the love of God in action. That includes healing. That includes deliverance. That's all mercy. No favor for the guy who has no understanding. You've got to have the spiritual understanding by hearing and doing the Word so you can see the mercy of God and the favor of God working in your life. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22, My people's foolish. They've not known me. God expects us to know Him. We are to know Him. If we don't know him, then obviously we haven't been doing what the Word says because as you get in the Word and you hear the Word, 
Remember, as you get the proper way of thinking, we talked about out of 1 John 5, 20, that then so you may know him as you do what the word says. Here, they haven't known me. It says they're sottish, or that means they're foolish children, or foolish sons, actually. And they have none understanding. That's how they got in that place. They're wise to do evil, and to do good they have no knowledge. You end up doing the wrong things with a lack of knowledge. These people are in the lack of understanding. We must walk in the ways of the Lord and know God. When you know God, because you're walking in His ways and doing it, you're going to have spiritual understanding in your life. We see another scripture over in Hosea chapter 4. Again, these are the effects of not having understanding. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 14, it says, I will not punish your daughters. This really is talking about not, it's talking about looking after or observing and paying attention, what it really means, to your daughters when they commit whoredom. Because what happens when you commit whoredom? You will be punished. Judgments will come. Why they translate it that way is not right. Here, when they commit whoredom, nor their spouses, when they commit adultery for themselves, are separated with whores, they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people doth not understand, that do not understand, because they're doing these evil things, shall fall. What's that tell you? Anybody who doesn't have a spiritual understanding, they're going to fall. A person who has pride doesn't have spiritual understanding of the effects of it. What's going to happen? They're going to fall. Anybody that's not walking in the ways of the Lord, they are going to have a fall. That's why we've got to get spiritual understanding. You wonder why I had a fall, why I had these problems, why I had these destructive things. This is not the only reason, but this is one reason because of a lack of understanding that will cause that to happen in our life. And then we go over to Romans chapter 1, and we looked at this today, but we need to look at it again. In Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Because that when they knew God, so here is one who knew God, and you know God because you have got his word in you, you have been doing the word, you've had revelation of it, you've been following it, you've gotten spiritual understanding, you know God, you've developed a relationship with him. What did they do? Did they continue in it? Remember, the understanding has to be continued in. They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. What happens if you don't do that? You become vain or empty in your imaginations means your way of thinking and reasoning. This is what this word means. Your thinking and your reasoning. Otherwise, you're not going to be thinking right. You're not going to be reasoning right. Why? Because you're not continuing the things of God. See, if you don't walk in the ways of God, you know, you're going to be turned. This, these guys got turned over to a reprobate mind, you'll see in a couple minutes. And it says they're foolish. This means not foolish, it's a word, a sunatos, which means without understanding. We pointed this out this morning. Their without understanding heart was darkened. The darkness came in because they weren't walking in the way of the Lord. Now they have a heart that's not without understanding. Obviously, if they knew God, they had a heart that was understanding. Now they have a heart that's not understanding because they didn't glorify him. You need to glorify him. You need to be giving him thanks. You need to be having ongoing, intimate fellowship with him, ministering to him, praising him, and doing the word. Otherwise, you'll be doing something else. And they, of course, they got vain in their thoughts and their reasonings, and now their lack of understanding heart becomes darkened. These ones also, now they're looking to themselves. They profess themselves to be wise. They became fools. Change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. How they could figure that one, that God resembles so one of these, is beyond, your, you know, beyond belief that they could fall for that. God gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between them. Notice, when you don't walk in the ways of the Lord, God will give you up to all these other things. You're not going to be able to just be doing whatever you want to do. You're either following God or else you're yielding to the devil. There's a spiritual authority that's going to be operating over you, and you're going to be taken down, and that's what happened. They changed the truth of God into a lie. We can't do that. Here they started not following the word of God, changed the truth of God into a lie, 
serve the creature more than the creator. Otherwise, they're serving themselves now. Anybody gets in pride, I, 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 me, 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 serving self, doing what they want to do, big mistake. God gave them up to the vile affections. Here we see these guys get into homosexualities that speaks of in these next verses. And then verse 28 is, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, in, in there's not there in the Greek, not like to retain God in precise, correct knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Otherwise, you're going to have a mind that's not approved, not standing the test, unfit to do. And what happens? They start doing these other things. They don't, they're not reasoning properly according to the word. And they're going to start doing things that are not convenient, not fit, not becoming, not right in the sight of the Lord. And what happened to these guys? The ones that once knew God, who did not continue in the ways of the Lord, they get filled with all this evil stuff. Meaning you can be, this is how somebody backslides, see? Because they don't do what the Word says. If you don't walk in a, a relationship with Him ongoing, you will be going down. And that's what happened. They got filled with all this evil. And as we pointed out, they even came to the place of without understanding. They didn't have any understanding any longer in their heart because they were walking contrary to the ways of the Lord and judgments were going to be coming upon them. God wants us to make sure that we have spiritual understanding. So this can cost you a lot. The word gets taken out of your heart. You're not going to be exalted. The devil's going to smite you left and right like what he did with Job. You're going to be walking on in darkness. And you won't be seeing where you're going. You're not going to see God directing your paths because you're going to be doing your own thing. You're going to be seeing destruction come to your soul if you would ever do such a thing such as adultery and get a wound and a dishonor and a reproach that will not be taken away. Also, if you don't want to walk in his understanding, then God, you won't be, you'll be walking as a fool and you won't discover all the things that are in your heart that need to be dealt with. God wants everything to be uncovered so we can come to repentance and walk in his ways. You wander out of the way of understanding, you remain in the congregation of the dead. <laughs> That's terrible. That's like a person that gets off the word and maybe would follow some wrong false doctrines. You're going to be following doctrines of men, traditions of men. You're going to end up in the congregation of the dead because there's no life in that which is not of the Lord. Slothfulness. You're going to have no fruit. You're going to be broken down. Lazy, sleeping, what happens? Poverty and lack come upon you. That's the opposite of prosperity and blessings. God wants you to be blessed, of course. If you don't walk in the ways of the Lord, you're withered and dried up spiritually and don't have understanding. No mercy, no favor. You can pray that prayer all you want. It's not going to happen unless you meet the conditions. Also, the people will be foolish, not knowing God. And as we saw, that they will fall and as we see the fact that they'll come to the place where they'll even get a reprobate mind and they'll see judgments come upon them. And they're foolish, their uh, uh, lack of, without understanding heart will be darkened. Well, we're not going that direction. We're going to be getting spiritual understanding. And what's going to happen if you get spiritual understanding? There's tremendous blessings that will come your way. Exodus 36, verse 1. Then wrought Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man, in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work. Remember, knowledge revealed through the Word gives you all the spiritual facts. You know things. But then you put that in operation, doing the Word, then spiritual understanding comes to you so you know how to do things and can see the results come forth from the knowledge that you've gained. And, of course, here you had wisdom and understanding to know what to do and how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. So we need to get this so we'll know how to do things. You'll have the knowledge you'll have, and you'll have the means of understanding and the wisdom to deal with everything that God wants. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. This is, this is where Solomon's speaking. He says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who's able to judge this thy so great a people? 
He wants you to have an understanding heart, a heart that is right before him. The speech pleased the Lord. God said to him in verse 11, Because thou hast asked this thing, is not asked for thyself long life, or riches for thyself, nor ask the life of thine enemies, but ask for thyself understanding to discern judgment, otherwise to be able to judge things correctly, because you'll know how to do things. He says, I've done according to thy words. Lo, I've given, lo, I've given you a wise and understanding heart, so there be none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto you. But he also says, I also given thee, which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. When you look for God to give you the things that he purposes for you and he wants you to have, then you're going to get added blessings like he did in this case. <coughs> and riches and honor will come, of course, for walking in the ways, keeping his word, doing the things that he says, because that's what produces the spiritual understanding in your life. He was going to walk in the ways of the Lord. And he talks about in verse 14, if you shall walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I'll lengthen thy days. And of course, he was going to be, get all these riches, all the riches that would come and the honor, the blessings that would come upon him. Another thing we see when you get spiritual understanding, and this will come from the word especially, you will know what to do, and you need this. Second, verse Chronicles 20, 12, verse 32. The children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. They had understanding of the times so that they knew what to do. To know what Israel ought to do. That's what we need. We've got to have spiritual understanding of the times. Because we're hearers and doers of the word. When you do that, God will impart that to you. And then he'll put it in you, in your heart, what you need to do in the midst of the times that are, you're dealing with. And we certainly need this in the times that we are approaching. You're going to need understanding of the times to know what to do. And as you are following the way of the Lord, then you will see that God will give that to you, and he'll direct you and show you what to do in what's going to happen down the line. Many people say, what do I do? Well, God's going to give you understanding of the times. He'll give you direction on what he wants you to do. First Chronicles 22, verse 11. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he hath said of thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding. Give thee charge concerning Israel, that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Notice, wisdom and understanding is given for you to be able to build the house of the Lord. You need God's wisdom and understanding to build correctly the spiritual house in your life so you don't make mistakes. Remember, everything you're doing, you're building. And so as you're doing the word, building this, it's producing spiritual understanding so you know what to do and you do the right things the way God wants you to do things. And so, of course, you'll be keeping the word of God and getting this accomplished in your life. We also see in Second Chronicles, Blessings that will come when you have this understanding of the Lord. Second Chronicles 2.12 Hiram said, Moreover, blessed be the Lord God of Israel that made heaven and earth, who has given to David a wise, the king a wise son, endued with prudence and understanding, that might build a house for the Lord and a house for his kingdom. That shows you that we're building something, of course, for the Lord and us, and also for his kingdom, which is his rule and reign bring it over the New Testament, we are now priests, a royal priesthood, and we are to rule and to reign. The spiritual house is being built in you so you can rule and reign for the Lord. If you don't get this built, you will not rule and reign. This comes through the word in you that you hear and do, that God will give you spiritual understanding and establish you so that you can rule and reign. Many Christians, they know they have authority, they have knowledge, but they're not ruling and reigning because they have not come to spiritual understanding by hearing and doing the word. It's going to be imparted in your heart and you will know what to do and how to build not only the house in you, but also rule and reign for the Lord. He wants that in your life. Another thing that we see 
When you get spiritual understanding, remember it comes into your heart, and what will happen? Job 6, verse 24. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. He'll show you the error. Because remember, you're, you're going to uncover your heart, the things that are in your heart. You'll discover these things when you get spiritual understanding. So, God's going to teach you. He's going to cause you to understand where you've erred. As you get spiritual understanding by hearing and doing the Word. Again, people that don't do the Word will not get, this, uh, they'll not get the understanding in their, from their heart to see where they've erred. And they just continue on in error. I've seen lots of people. They just continue on in it. It's almost like they have blinders on. but They can't see what they need to change until you get spiritual understanding of things. As you're God's imparting that to you, then you'll begin to see the places where you've erred and the things that aren't right and the things that need to be corrected. Job 26, verse 12. It says, He divides the sea with His power, and by His understanding He smites through the proud. We see many people that have pride, and until they get to the place of spiritual understanding, it seems like they never deal with their pride. They won't smite through it and get rid of it. Because pride is running to your own self. But when you get the understanding in your heart, that's because God now has given you understanding in your heart on the inside of you. Remember what happens. Understanding the heart will cause you to discover yourself. And he will bring forth revelation of the pride that needs to be dealt with. God wants all pride dealt with in your life. We see also in Psalms 119. See, spiritual understanding is going to come not just to bring blessings your way. It's going to come to help you to see, to clean you up. And that's what he wants for every single one of us. Verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. The more you get the spiritual understanding the more you're going to be effective as a witness for the Lord. You're going to talk. You'll have that motivation even to talk of His wondrous works. And of course, what's going to happen? You're going to see the wondrous works in your life because of doing the Word. You'll see God performing the Word and you having that because you gained spiritual understanding. You worked it at your salvation now. You saw the blessings. You saw how, it, how God brought it forth. And you're going to be able to talk of the wondrous works you've seen because you've understand, you have under, came to the understanding of the way of his precepts. That's why hearing and doing the word is so important. God is imparting spiritual understanding to you as you're walking in the knowledge of God. Remember, those that do the word are the ones that come to understanding. And then, of course, as you are carrying out, remember, the thing we talked about is when you have spiritual understanding, you will have absolute certain confidence, most certain confidence. We talked about this morning in this situation. And you'll be doing the word and you'll have victory. You'll never have draw back into doubt or unbelief. And you'll see his wondrous works. And what will you be doing? You'll be talking about them. You'll be witnessing of the things that God has done in your life. Psalms 119, verse 34. <clears throat> Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law, and yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Notice he didn't say, Give me knowledge. He said, Give me understanding. We need to get understanding. Knowledge just shows you facts. You do that, spiritual understanding is imparted to you. That is you're now your heart is right before the Lord. You have the word in your heart. You're walking in his ways. You're bringing forth fruitfulness, remember. And what's going to happen when you have spiritual understanding? You will be walking in the word because you understand from what God has accomplished what is required of you and what you need to be doing. And you're not going to let the devil come and take that word out of your heart because he will if you don't walk in it. He says, I'll keep the law, I'll observe it with my whole heart. I mean, you're ready to follow the way of the Lord 100% as you get the spiritual understanding in your life. What else will happen when you get spiritual understanding? You'll be so changed on the inside of you, you will hate every false way. Psalms 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. You need to hate 
false ways, anything that's contrary to the word, anything that's sin, anything that's lawless, anything that's unrighteous, anything that is a wrong way, you should hate it. And that's because you get understanding. We see in verse 144, The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding, and I shall live. That means when you get the understanding of the word because you've been a doer of it, it'll produce the life of God in you, which is the blessings of God that he will bring forth in your life. Life will be manifest to you. Another blessing we see, Proverbs 1, verse 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding will attain unto wise counsels. Remember, we were told that we're to not only get understanding, but we're to get this counsel. We've got to understand his counsel and have the counsel of God. Here, a man of understanding, he will attain, he will acquire, he will possess. Same word for buying the truth and buying counsel, buying uh, understanding, buying all those things that we saw under the wise counsel of the Lord. That'll be the direction of the Lord, the leading of God. Many people don't get the counsel of God, the guidance of God, the direction, because they didn't get to the place of understanding. They just wanted God to do it for them, regardless of whether they're doing the word or not. No, not going to work that way. The guy who's wise hears, he increases learning. The man of understanding who's been doing the word, he will attain. He will be able to possess the wise counsel. The direct, this means the direction and the guidance of the Lord. Because if you try, just try to do things in your own strength, in your own direction, you'll make a mess of it. We need to have his guidance. We see in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 11, Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. This means to watch over you, not sar. So when you have spiritual understanding, the result of that will be you'll be watched over. Because you'll be putting God in operation. The Word will be obviously working in your life. You'll have fruitfulness. You'll have seeing promises come to pass. It will be watching over you. And it will be bringing good things for you. And then look what it says in verse 12. What's it going to watch over you to do? To deliver you from the way of the evil. Man's been added by the translator. Way of the evil. Any kind of evil that would come. Evil coming from the devil and from the man that speaketh forward things. So it be from anything of the devil or anything from anybody used of the devil who would speak against you. And maybe people speak against you and do evil things. If you have spiritual understanding, you won't be reacting to the people that speak evil things against you. People without spiritual understanding, they seem to be reactors to whatever comes along. We can't be reacting just because they said things to us. Because we know we're giving place to the devil. When you have spiritual understanding, God, you know that God will deliver you from the way of the evil and from anybody that speaks word curses coming at you or whatever. They're not going to have effect upon you because you're going to walk in the way of the Lord and you're going to overcome and conquer the attacks of the enemy. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. Happy, or this means also blessed, is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. When you get wisdom or find wisdom and you get understanding, it's going to release the blessings in your life. And God wants us blessed. Another thing we see in Proverbs 8, blessings from having spiritual understanding. Proverbs 8, 9, they are all plain to him that understandeth. Things will be plain. They'll be clear to you. Why? Because you're here and a doer of the word. You're walking in the word. God's giving you his counsel. He's giving you his direction. The way that you have will be plain before you and write to them that find knowledge. This is talking about the words of your mouth and righteous, nothing perverse or forward in them. And you'll, the thing they'll be plain to you that understands. You'll receive instruction and you'll see all the things that God has for you as you're walking in the ways of the Lord. So he'll show you things that you have need of. Things will be clear. They'll be plain to those who have spiritual understanding. And of course, what happens? The guy that gets spiritual understanding, remember, he's doing the word. What else is going to happen? He's going to get wisdom imparted to him as he continues in it. Proverbs 10, 23. It's a sport as a, to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding has wisdom. 
Because the man of understanding is one who's hearing and doing the word consistently. That's how wisdom is going to be imparted to you because you're operating. A man of understanding means he's one who's operating that way. He's walking in the spiritual understanding of the Lord. We see back in verse 13. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. Again, the guy who's got understanding, he's going to be speaking forth. And what's going to be coming out of him? Wisdom, because God was going to give him wisdom as well. Wisdom will come forth. Many people, instead of speaking things that are wisdom, they speak their own whatever they think, their own opinions. That's not going to do anything. If you don't have spiritual understanding, you're not going to have much to say. Because you want to say things that are going to bring forth wisdom out of you to help people to know what to do. Praise God. We see also a person in chapter 11. If you have a, a, a understanding, you will hold your peace and not get into strife, arguments, speaking wrong things. Proverbs 11, 12. He that's void of wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding, he holds his peace. He will be keeping silence, as Young's brings out. Otherwise, he's not going to be making mistakes with his mouth and just run it off the mouth and react, speaking negative things. No, he's going to hold his peace and learn only to speak right things because he understands. He has that understanding from hearing and doing the word of the effects of what has, will happen if he doesn't hold his peace and he speaks all kind of words. He'll get himself into strife. He'll get himself into arguments. He'll get himself into all kinds of things. And he sees the effect of it. It'll bring destruction. As we saw, one who did not have understanding did not get favor. The opposite, of course, is true when you do have understanding. Proverbs 13, 15. Good understanding gives favor. God will give favor because understanding is the, one of the conditions for seeing the favor of God come forth in your life. We also see chapter 14, verse 6. <clears throat> A scorner seeks wisdom and finds it not, but knowledge is easy to, unto him that understandeth. Knowledge is easy here to the guy who has this understanding. Otherwise, it'll come easily to you because the knowledge is going to be building on what you already have. Remember, it even talks about that in, over in Colossians 1.9 where you get the precise, correct knowledge and all wisdom and spiritual understanding so you walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. And then it also says you're increasing in knowledge. Otherwise, knowledge is going to be increasing and easy to you as it is here because the more you have understanding, you, the real, you understand by hearing and doing the Word, that's the answer. It's going to bring victory. So what are you going to be doing? You're going to be seeking for more knowledge. You're going to be increasing in the knowledge of God and finding it easy. You'll get more and more. It's going to keep building in your life. Why? Because of the fact that you have gained spiritual understanding. Another thing, the guy who's got spiritual understanding, he won't be one who's getting upset and mad and angry. Proverbs 14, 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. We're to be slow to wrath. We get reacting, getting upset, getting angry, getting, you know, reacting, getting up, uh, wrathful, um, anger of any type. We have hardly, we have low understanding, if any. Slow to wrath is of great understanding. The guy is hasty of spirit, though he reacts, he's exalting folly. He is being foolish. We see another thing in Proverbs 15. The person who has the spiritual understanding, as it says, verse 14, the heart of him that hath understanding, remembrance of the heart. What's he going to do? He's going to seek for knowledge. Why? Because he knows the knowledge that he got, that he acted upon, that produced spiritual understanding in him because he was a doer of it. Is look what it's produced, the good things and the blessings in his life. So what's he going to want? More knowledge. So I can do that. Walk in it. Get more spiritual understanding. See more blessings come my way. So you're going to be seeking knowledge. Otherwise, the guy who's got understanding, he's going to be in the Word more and more and more. If you don't have a desire to get in the Word and get the knowledge of God, there's something wrong. 
your heart is not having spiritual understanding. If you had the spiritual understanding in your heart, you would be seeking the knowledge because you know that that's how you're going to see God's blessings coming your way. Verse 21. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. See, he's a hearer and a doer of the word. He sees the results of it. He knows, obviously, that if he doesn't walk in the way of the word, he's going to have destructive effects. So he's going to walk uprightly. He's got the experience. A man of understanding has the experience of hearing and doing the word, see? And so he's going to walk uprightly because he sees the fruit of it. And he sees the destruction that comes if he doesn't walk in it. You're going to walk uprightly because you know you must walk that straight and narrow path uprightly if you're going to see God's blessings come upon you in your life. Proverbs 16, verse 22. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. Life, like a wellspring, just coming up out of you. The life of God will be flowing out of you for the one who has this understanding. Again, why is that? Because of the word in you. Jesus comes to bring life more, life, more abund life and life more abundantly. It's going to be because of the person's a hearer and a doer of the word. You've got spiritual understanding. It'll be like a well of life that's going to come out of you because you're going to continue to walk in the ways of the Lord. Here's another statement. If you really are walking in the ways of the Lord, and you have the spiritual understanding, you're going to be said to have an excellent spirit before God. Proverbs 17, 27, He that hath knowledge spares his words. He knows his words can get him in trouble. That's the guy that's knowledge. And a man of understanding, hey, he, he understands that, and even more, he's of an excellent spirit, it says. He's excellent spirit. That's what God wants for us. Verse 28, as well. <clears throat> Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. He that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5 that we're to let our words be few. We can get ourselves in trouble by the words of our mouth. That's why we need to watch. You need to shut your lips from speaking the wrong things. That is a man of understanding. He's wise. He knows his words are important. <coughs> and he only wants to speak the right things. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. Because you're going to see, you're getting your soul strengthened, build up, build up with the things of God. He that keeps understanding shall find good. Notice talking about getting the wisdom, but this is talking about keeping, guarding the understanding. Remember, we talked about how you can lose it. You could lose it or have it taken away or come to the place of not having it based on whether the word's in your heart or not, and that comes because you hear and do it and walk in it. You're to keep and guard the understanding you have. You can lose it if you keep it, which means you're going to be maintaining it because you're going to be walking in the word. What's going to happen? You're going to find good. Blessings are going to be coming your way. This is why we got to get knowledge. He says, get understanding, get wisdom, get all these things. That's how you're going to see God's blessings and good things happen for you in your life. Verse 25. Smite a scorner and the simple will beware. Reprove him that has understanding. Reprove means to where you're correcting him uh, in some way, rebuking him, uh, convicting him, so whatever you're speaking. Prove one that has understanding, he will understand knowledge. Otherwise, he's going to understand the knowledge of God and what he should be doing. Otherwise, we need to be ready to receive correction. Be correctable, and you'll be able to understand knowledge. Many people that aren't correctable, they, they don't ever get to that place of understanding the knowledge of God. Proverbs chapter 20. See, if they just go on and spin their wheels in their own continued sin instead of receiving the correction. Proverbs 20, verse 5. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. That shows you that you need spiritual understanding to draw the counsel that God puts in your heart out 
to work for you. And what's the counsel? This is going to be his advice, his purpose, his direction, his leading and guiding in your life, what he has for you. It's there. <clears throat> you have to be one man of understanding to be able to draw it out. We also see in Proverbs 24, more blessings that come from having the spiritual understanding. Verse 3, through wisdom, a house is built. By understanding, it's established. It becomes stable and firm. Nothing can shake it. Basically, it's like the foundation being established. Nothing's going to shake you. And how do you get to that foundation, remember? It's got laid because you hear and do the word consistently. That's how you get understanding. The result is you have your house established. And by knowledge will the chambers be filled with all the precious and pleasant riches. God's blessings will come. And then he talks about how a wise man strong and a man of knowledge increases strength. This is why we got to get knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. The knowledge of God brings the strength to you. It's going to bring all the good things, all the pleasant riches into you. Remember, the riches of Christ are to come unto you. Same time as you get the wisdom or get the understanding, you're going to have that foundation laid. You're going to be established. Nothing can move you. And wisdom is going to see the building of it and cause you to become strong. This is what's to happen on the inside of you in your life. We see in Proverbs 28, verse 2. For the transgression of the land, many are princes thereof, but the man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof, shall be prolonged. Otherwise, his situation that he's in <clears throat> will be prolonged. He's going to be blessed. Instead of seeing destructive works come, you're going to be prolonged. Your days will be prolonged. Things will continue on. It can also mean continue on or continue long in what you're doing. Continual blessings, continual good things will be happening to you because of understanding and knowledge. You'll see that the state or whatever situation you're dealing with will be continuing on. Well, that's good. We want to see God's blessings continue, not just come for a moment. They're supposed to continue on in your life. Verse 5, Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all. Things has been added there, but it's all would refer to all the things that God has for you from His Word. So, seeking the Lord is going to be important. If you will seek the Lord consistently, through being in the Word, studying the Word, praying, praise, worship, doing the things that He says, carrying out the things, being in the way of the Lord, serving the Lord, all these different things, you're going to see the understanding. You see, you're a doer of the Word. You're walking in His ways. That's what it comes down to. If you're a doer of the Word, you will have understanding. And God will bring you to the place of being able to understand all things. The tremendous blessings will come. Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 13. Take you wise men and understanding, and known among your tribes. And what does he do with them? He said, I'll make them rulers over you. Otherwise, these are the ones that get exalted. People that get wisdom and understanding are the ones that get exalted by the Lord and raised up in the positions of, of leadership, authority, we need to get this, because God wants you to get wisdom and understanding, not just for your own life, but so you can be a vessel that God can use in ministering to others and be one who can be an effective uh, leader for the Lord and, and doing the, carrying out the ministry that the Lord has for you. We also see over in John <clears throat> chapter 12, and we talked about the fact that when you get spiritual understanding... It's going to bring, bring forth healing in your life. And here we see. He hath blinded their eyes, hardened their hearts, that they should not see with their eyes. This is because they weren't walking in the way of the Lord. Nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Meaning if they did see with their eyes, if they did understand with their heart, because they are hearing and doing the word and their heart is right, and be converted turned towards the ways of the Lord, then it talks about that he might heal them. He might bring forth healing. And all these are subjunctives, meaning they're conditional statements. Every one of these are all subjunctive mood. 
You got to meet the conditions. So this is why we got to get the word in us. We got to have spiritually seeing the, uh, through the knowledge of God that comes to us and, and getting understanding in our heart, changing our ways, of course. When you get understanding, remember, it discovers your heart. You're going to change your ways. You're going to turn from anything that's not right. And when you've done that and you meet the conditions, then that he might heal you, of course, you're going to take hold of healing. You're going to cast out the demons. You're going to drive out anything that is, is hindering you. So you get healed and delivered and set free. And that's what he wants. This, this word also can mean to make you whole. Bring about your salvation. God wants to bless you and bring forth great things. We've got to meet the conditions. And we're going to need understanding with our heart so you change your ways. Remember, this proceeds as you're hearing and doing the word. One of the things God, many, many people think, if I get understanding, then I'll be all these blessings. No, you're going to get understanding so God can deal with you and get you turned around in the right direction. So you get converted. So you'll be walking the right way. And then he can bring forth that healing as you're meeting the conditions. We also see, as we've seen before, this morning, that when you have spiritual understanding, or it's Matthew 13, you're going to be bringing forth fruit in your life. Verse 23, He that receives seed in the good ground, he that heareth the word, he's hearing the word, so he's getting revelation knowledge, understanding it, why is that? Because he's been hearing and doing it and carrying it out in his life. He's bearing fruit. The result of the word that you're hearing and doing will bring forth fruit. And he brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. The fruit, the more fruit, the much fruit will be coming forth in your life. We see also something in, in, when we look over in Nehemiah about these blessings that will come from spiritual understanding. In Nehemiah chapter 8, here's where all the people gathered themselves together as one man in the street that was before the water gate. And by the way, this is a revelation also, not only what happened then and will happen for your life, but also of end time. Because 773, the verse before there, speaks of the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, some of the people, and the Nethanans, and all Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, remember the seventh month is Tishri, and the seventh month prophetically is pointing towards the work being accomplished in the end time church for the coming of the Lord, because that's the second coming of the Lord month. The children of Israel were in their cities, all the people gathered themselves together as one man. You see, the body of Christ is going to come to be one, remember? Jesus prayed that they would become one so they could be full of the glory of God. One man in the street that was before the water gate. They spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord God had commanded to Israel. So they're becoming one in what capacity? Of hearing the word. That's how you're going to come one. They come, they want to hear the word. All those ones that are going to be one with the Lord, will write with him, that will be the, one, the, the remnant that's going to be in one accord, are the ones that want to hear the word. People that don't want to hear the word, they won't be a part of the remnant. They won't be part of the, the one that Jesus was praying about. It's going to be the ones that want to hear the word. They brought the book of the law of Moses. Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. Meaning, this is what's happening here for the end time church, just prophetically. All those who could hear with understanding, meaning these guys were going to hear and put it in operation and do it, is what that implication is, so that they can get the spiritual understanding of the word. Notice, these guys just didn't hear a couple of scriptures and go off their way and do whatever they wanted to do. No. He read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. Well, morning is talking about at daybreak. That's six in the morning. Midday is talking about noon. That's six hours these guys were in the Word. These guys weren't just, give me a couple of scriptures, you know, and then go off and do what I want. These guys were in the Word for six hours. 
before the men and women and those that could understand, and ears of all the people were attentive. Remember, if you're attentive, the ones that have understanding are attentive to the word. We saw that scripture earlier. They were attentive unto the, the people were under the book of the law. They were ready to take hold of this and put it in operation in their life. Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which he made for the purpose, and beside him stood all these different ones, and these different ones that were on his right hand, and the other ones all on his left hand, all these ones, ready. And he opened the book in the sight of all the people. He was above all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. This is why we have you stand up. We don't have you stand up when we pray for the word, just go through some religious tradition. No. We, everything we're doing here is in line with the word. He is going to, we're going to open the book. The people stood up. They're honoring the word of God. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up of their hands, they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. And so all these different ones that were there with him and the Levites caused the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. Meaning these people were hearing the word, they were responding to the word, they ca he caused them to understand it, and the people stood in their place. And this is talking about the revelation that all comes. This is the word that means he's the savior. This is the one that guy's name means built, because you're building things in your life. This is the one where he's scorched, meaning he's obviously dealt with you after all your sins. He's convicted you to deal with everything that's not of the Lord. This is the one about right hand. This one speaks of one, um, uh, I'm trying to remember what Asidius means here. <clears throat> I forget what that one is. Sabbatical. This is the rest. Comes to the place of rest. This is the one who, his majesty is Jehovah. So he's seeing the majesty of the Lord. This is one of the work of Jehovah, meaning the work of God is being done in your life. This is all implying what the word will do for you. This is the one who was crippled, but what's going to happen? God's going to raise him up. Jehovah has helped, brings him to the place of him being endowed with the blessings of God. This is the one who means he's merciful. The mercy of God is flowing. This is the one who comes, he does wonders. It's all progressive of what God's doing in your life. And he comes to the place of being the ones of Levites. And what's Levite mean? Join two. If you're joined together, you become one. All these ones that have grown up in all these things through the word and seeing God's work in their life is what all these are implying, this work being accomplished. It brings the people to understand the word. See, God wants you to come to the place of having the spiritual understanding. Read in the book of the law distinctly. It means clarify clearly. Made, made it very declare, distinctly declaring things. That means it wasn't just what do you think this word says. Distinctly declaring means it's specific scriptures. He's telling you the specific things you need to know. And that's exactly what we do here. Gave the sense. Gave him the understanding. This is the word that will me means understanding as well. Translated that, as you see, seven of the times, majority of the times it's referring to that, and caused them to understand the reading. Why? Because they were taking hold of the word. They were doing the word. They were seeing God bring forth his blessings in their life. Verse 9, here it speaks these same ones, the Levites that taught the people said to the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Mourn not nor weep. The people wept when they heard the words of the law. These guys were seeing the word of God working in their life. And then, in verse 10, this is where we hear this joy of the Lord is your strength scripture. He said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing's prepared. Otherwise, they got it in them. Now send it out to others. Witnessing. This day is holy unto the Lord, neither be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your place of protection and your strength. And how they have that? Because of the work of God that was done in them, to bring them to the place of being one, to bring them to the place of being Levi, joined to the Lord, to bring them to the place of, of knowing the word and understanding it. And so they were here, they said, the day is holy, holy before the Lord. So they all went their way. 
Why? They send their portions. They had great joy because they understood the words that were declared to them. When you have understanding, you're going to have great joy. And when you have understanding, you're going to be a dynamic witness to witness to other people because you've seen God working in your life. That's what this is all implying. The second day, they gathered together. Hey, they wanted more. The chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and Levites and the Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. These guys were continuing to hear the word and then to give it out to others and growing in it. This is all a type pointing towards the great work that is going to happen. And these guys, when we jump down to chapter 9, verse 2, the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers. They're not going to get around anybody that's going to contaminate them. Stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. They got rid of their sins, iniquities of their fathers. What would that also imply from our standpoint today? That's talking about inherited generational curses, isn't it, that come down the line. You remit those sins of the forefathers, obviously implying they were dealing with what was affecting them from the inheritance line, which for us application is we're going to cast out all the devils from inheritance, get set free from all of them. Stood in their place, read the book of the law of the Lord their God one-fourth part of the day. How many hours in a day? 24. One-fourth part of the day, and one-fourth part they confessed and worshiped the Lord their God. This could, this really could refer to the 24-hour period or it could be just the daytime, but it appears, uh, it does mean, it usually means a 24-hour period is what they're saying here, implying it. So that's six hours here, they're hearing the word, six hours they were confessing, and of course, in the New Testament era, remember, confessing the sins and the sins of the forefathers, what do we do? We cast out the demons, don't we, to get rid of them. These guys were hearing the word and casting the devils out from a New Testament application of what you would do. We don't need to confess our sins for six hours in the New Testament. We can confess them and receive forgiveness and cleansing immediately. What do we need to do for hours and hours? Cast out the demons that have come into them from all the sins, from inheritance, our own sins, and victimization. That's why I'm saying that from an application, from a New Testament sense, you could see what you'd be doing for six hours, continually casting out. And worship the Lord, their God. These guys were seeing this tremendous work come forth. This is all what it's prophetic of. For the end time church, remember, in the seventh month. It's Nehemiah 10, 28. The rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nethams, all that separated themselves from the people of the lands under the law of God. They're walking after the law of God now. They're separating themselves from everything that's not of God. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I want to walk after the law of God. I'm through with this stuff of the world. I'm through with any of this stuff that's worthless. I have a bunch of hay, wood, and stubble. I separate myself from everything that's not of God, from the people, from these things of the, of the world, the people of the lands. And it says, their wives, sons, daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding. Why did they do it? Because they got the knowledge of God, and they were doing it, and they got the understanding. Look what knowledge and understanding will do for you if you get it. It'll bring you to the place of you're separating your whole life to the law of God. You're living according to the word. That's the way you walk. And what did they do? They claved to their brethren. They were one together, loving their brother, their nobles, and and enter into a curse and to oath to walk in God's laws, they committed, we're going to walk in the law or we're going to see curses come. They committed to do everything the word said, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord our God and his judgments and his statutes. And when you commit to do everything that he says, what's going to happen to you? Blessings are going to come on you and overtake you. And God's going to bless you in everything that you do. This is all a picture in Nehemiah of the end time work in the church. When you get the word in you, and you hear and do it, and you spend quality time in it, hours and hours, six hours a day, you get the truth. You're walking it, you're hearing it, you're doing it. And these people came to the place of understanding as the things were accomplished in their life to bring them to that place, and they continued in it the second day, remember, and then they would separate themselves from everything that's not of the Lord. And in implication, they dealt with all the sin, cast out all the demons, came to the place of being uh, one and walking after it, separated themselves to the law of God. That is what God is going to do in the end time 
remnant, holy church. Praise God. That's what he's doing in you. You can see the picture of casting out the demons, dealing with those inherited generational things. So we need to cast them out and get free of everything. 2 Timothy 2.7 Consider what I say. Remember, this means to perceive with the mind. With the mind, your, that's revelation in your mind, and you have the revelation, and you have that, that uh, knowledge in your mind. <clears throat> and the Lord, remember what we saw this this morning. First of all, the word and is not and. It's gar, which means for or because. Perceive what I'm saying with your mind because or for the Lord. Remember what we talked about this morning. This is an optative mood verb, which means his desire or his wish. For the Lord desires and wishes to give you understanding in all things. Because what happens when you get understanding in all things? You're going to see God's blessings come on you in all these aspects in your life. You've got to get the spiritual understanding. That comes by doing the word and meeting all the conditions that we've talked about. So he's saying, if you will be perceiving with your mind all these things, you get this revelation, and you be taking hold of this and doing it in your life, then meeting the conditions, the reason is God wants to give you understanding, spiritual understanding in all things. And that's what he will do. One last scripture, Jeremiah. So we talked about the blessings as well as, well as what would hinder us if we, what will happen if we don't have it. Jeremiah 9, 24. Let him that glorieth glory in this. What shall we glory in? Nothing of self. He that understandeth and knoweth me. That is what you want. Isn't it so we want to know the Lord and understand the ways of the Lord? that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. And for these, in these things I delight, saith the Lord. You're going to glory in the fact that you've come to the knowledge and the understanding. You've come to the fact that you understand who he is, what he's doing, why he does everything. And you see his loving kindness, and his, as well as his judgment and his righteousness in the earth. And you see his blessings coming upon you in your life, because you have come to the place of having revelation knowledge, and spiritual understanding. That's why he says, get wisdom, get understanding. Remember the guy that gets understanding, he's going to get wisdom too because he continues in it. It's going to be imparted to you because you're continuing it. You get that wisdom, get understanding. It's the principal thing. You've got to get it. God will give it to you, remember. You can't get it yourself. It's imparted by the Lord. It's all dealing in your heart, but you've got to have your heart right. That's why when you get understanding, it's going to deal with your heart to get things right so then you can get healed and delivered. See, a lot of people, just get me delivered of my problems and I want to deal with my problems. Just get, get me free, free of my pains and all this stuff. And they don't want to deal with their heart. No, understanding with the heart brings you to the place of being converted if you meet the conditions, remember. Change, turn. And then, if you, having met the conditions, then you can see the healing of God. People haven't seen this. So the big picture is God's word is bringing you to the place of getting knowledge, spiritual understanding. Remember what it was in Colossians 1.9 that you walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing? Your walk's now going to get right. You're going to be fruitful in every good work. You're not going to be walking in anything that's not fruitful anymore. You're going to be increasing in knowledge. You're going to be strengthened with all power. You're going to be steadfast and long-suffering and have joyfulness because you see the mighty work of the Lord done in your life. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the blessings of God that will come upon me having spiritual understanding. I also see the effects of a lack of understanding that will come upon me in my life. The word will be taken out. I wouldn't have fruitfulness. I won't be exalted. The devil will be smiting me. I'd be walking in darkness. I will not see the Lord direct my paths. I will not see the victory come forth in my life. I won't see mercy or I won't see favor. 
In fact, if I wander out of the way of understanding, I'll be in the congregation of the dead. I thank you. But if I don't have understanding, if I'm slothful, if I'm lazy, everything will get broken down. And poverty and lack will come upon me suddenly. I'm, well, if I am not having understanding, I'll get withered. I'll dry up. No mercy. No favor for me. If I have lack of understanding, I will fall. My heart will be darkened. And I will go down a path of destruction to see judgments come against me. I thank you that I'm going to get spiritual understanding because I'm going to meet all the conditions of the Word of God and hear and do the Word of God. And I will see all these blessings coming upon me in my life. My heart will be dealt with. Everything will be dealt with. All the evil things will be driven out of my life. I will see a total conversion and change. And I will see God's healing and His deliverance, His counsel, His blessings, His wisdom, all the great things that He wants to accomplish in my life because I have spiritual understanding. Thank you, Lord. I'm getting it. I'm going to buy it by doing what's necessary to obtain it. I thank you, Lord, that as I do your word, thank you for imparting unto me knowledge, spiritual understanding, and wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Tremendous blessings will come. Remember, the spiritual understanding, we're not talking about understanding the mind. We're talking about the understanding in the heart imparted to you by God because you've met the conditions. You can't make yourself come to not to understanding. It has to be imparted to you. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We will be hearers and doers of the word. We will meet all the conditions. We will conquer all the enemies. We will come in line with your word and get rid of anything that would cause us not to have understanding. We thank you, Father, for much fruit from this, that we will obtain the spiritual understanding and the wisdom of God. We will see your blessings and see you accomplish your work in us. And also in the end time church that we're a part of to become a part of this glorious church that will rise up and walk in your ways. Thank you, Father, for all that you're going to accomplish because we are hearers and doers of this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.